Let us, let us acclaim him and worship him in gladness. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, oh come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ. Right, good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to each and every one of you, and particularly to folks that are visiting, visiting here this morning. We really pray you have a blessed time us as we celebrate this special day. Just a couple of notices, just very short and brief. They're the birthdays for the week, a lot of Al's and Liam's and Lynn's and Laura's, so trust you all have a blessed uh, day and your birthday. And then just a reminder that on Friday, the 5th, it's the first Friday of the month, that there'll be the, the, the campfire um, outside for the, and just some fellowship, some hot cross buns, etc. Please uh, just keep that in mind. Then just a, an announcement. Um, the search committee, just an update. Uh, the search committee has got to a point where we're inviting um, Yanku Moka to come for the, to preach with a view to a calling. That's going to be in two weeks' time on the 14th of April. So please just bear that in mind. Um, some of you might remember Yanko did preach uh, a few, a, a month or two back. And I, and, and I think the only way, if you're not sure, is he's the one here, that the example of the broom. And I think that's because I remember that part. So he, he is coming to the view to call in two weeks' time. So, so we, we just encourage each of you know, to all be here um, for that day. Then just a special thank you to Margie and the team for these flowers. Aren't they looking beautiful? Um, really appreciate all those that contributed flowers or funds towards them. So really thank you. They're really amazing. Um, 
There was one other thing that I want to say. Yeah, just be, bear in mind, you, you notice there's no power in the area. The, we, hey, we've been here since we had the sunrise service, and we give th thanks to Angus and the team that put that together. But the lights have been on for quite a while. We are on the backup system, but it's been since 6 o'clock, so there's a chance that in the course of all of this we're going to lose power. So just bear with us. We'll, we'll hopefully just figure that out as we go along, but just bear with us on that. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Death is swallowed up. Victory is won. God be praised. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might without limit are yours, O God, forever and ever. For you have raised to life our Lord Jesus Christ. You have brought from death our victorious King. You have shown the triumph of faith and offered us life in all its beauty and joy. O God, the first and the last and the living one, Lord of all time and space, we praise you. We rejoice in your power and your presence among us. Through Christ our Lord. The presence of a living God makes us aware of our sin. Therefore, let us make our confession to Him. The words of the confession will appear on your screen. Almighty God, who gives life to the full, we confess that we live only. Uh, uh, the life indeed. indeed. In the risen Christ, Christ you, have you have given us strength, strength. but we are, we still, are still weak, weak in so many so ways. In, in rising, days in Jesus from the grave, you, you have, have given, given us joy, us but we are still caught up too easily in our sorrows. In the living Christ, there is perfect peace, yet still we fret and are anxious about many things. We live only partly trusting you in your glorious victory. Christ is risen from the dead, therefore he is able to bring us to life, though we were dead in our sins. Be assured then of his forgiveness and trust in his redeeming power. Almighty God, let the startling news of the Easter event in the rising of our Lord Jesus Christ, arouse us to a more daring faith, a more venturing hope, and a more self-giving love, that we may live a more joyful life in the power of Christ our Savior and for the sake of the world he loves. Amen. Go ahead. Let's stand and worship together. We'll be singing Thine Be the Glory. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, Thou, O death, hast won. Angels in bright rain.
you to share in a psalm for Easter Day. The responses should come up to the screen. Uh, I will use the, the M sense for minister, the C sense for congregation. <laughs> Join in this joyfully. The Lord gives life. He gives yes, life, life to, to the poor. The Lord gives life. He gives victory over death. death. As the spring follows the winter, giving new life to all creation. So the Lord raises up his people and renews the faithful of heart. As water gives new life to the parched earth, so the Lord renews those who thirst after him. The Lord would not let his holy one see corruption. The Lord transforms into new life his crucified son. The Lord has raised up Jesus the faithful. He has given victory to the obedient one. Rejoice in the power of the living God. Dance in the spirit of the ever-present Lord. Sing the songs of his grace and might. Praise him aloud with shouts of triumph. Lift up your hearts in joy and peace. Be glad in him, his love declare. For the Lord gives life. Yes, life to the The Lord gives life. He gives victory over death. The stranglehold of death is broken. The darkness of despair is turned to light. The burden of the night of pain is lifted. The peace of God comes to the sad of heart. Rejoice in the power of the living God. Dance in the spirit of the ever-present Lord. The Lord has raised up Jesus, the faithful. He has given victory to the obedient one. For the Lord gives life. Yes, life to the The Lord gives life. Yes, yes, life to, to the, the full. He gives victory over death. Yes, life to the full. We sing glory be to God the Father. Glory be to God the Father. Glory be to God the Son. Glory be to God the Spirit. Great Jehovah, three in one. Glory, 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 eternal ages run. Glory, bless you, praise eternal, thus the choir of angels sing. Honor, riches, but dominion, thus its grace creation. This, morning reading, uh, this morning's reading comes from Mark 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices to th- so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. 
and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On Thursday night, we stood just outside the upper room where Jesus started the Last Supper with his disciples. and We tried to understand what this event meant for us. On Friday morning, we stood on the slopes of Golgotha as we saw the man in the middle, Jesus, who reaches out his hand in love to all the world. This morning, we stand at a graveside. These days, we hardly stand at gravesides anymore. We hold memorial services, and everybody goes out of the church, and the service is over. But many of you, many of you will have stood at the graveside of some loved one, some friend, during your life. Possibly someone with whom you've shared a great deal of what it means to be alive. You and I know that death is the great shared reality of every human being. But this morning we stand at a very special graveside, situated just outside the walls of the ancient city of Jerusalem. It is a grave which has been cut into the rock of the side of the hill. It belonged to a rich man called Joseph of Arimathea, but the one who is buried in it now, now, it comes to that, is Jesus of Nazareth. We stand at this graveside with three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. Jesus meant something very special in the life of each of these three women. He'd done a great deal for them and for their dignity. He'd made life worth living for them. And then his life had been taken away from him. And we watch them as they come to the graveside. What's on their mind is the fact that they had seen a very large stone rolled across the front of the grave. They'd seen how many strong men it had taken to move that stone in the first place. And then it had been sealed. They've come because late on Friday evening they had been on the side of the hill of Golgotha and they'd seen their beloved Saviour die and they hadn't had time to prepare his body for his burial. Now they came with the spices in their hands. And the question in their minds is this, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the grave? <clears throat> they knew they couldn't do it. They guessed that the soldiers certainly wouldn't do it for them. They must have felt very inadequate and very unsure as they drew near to this tomb. But imagine their surprise when they saw the stone had already been rolled away. Something had already been done for them 
which they knew they could not do for themselves. And in some ways, the whole of this weekend is about that. Something has been done for us, which we know we can't do for ourselves. Something has been done which makes all the difference to their visit to this graveside. And what they discovered is simply this. The stone has been rolled away, and the one they had seen laid into the grave on Friday night was no longer there. For he had risen. He was alive and he would remain alive forevermore. And so, at the graveside of Jesus, we discover that there is a power greater than death. At the graveside of Jesus, we discover that what we could never do for ourselves, he has done for us. At the graveside of Jesus, we discover that time, life, has taken on a whole new dimension and will never be the same again. And so this morning we come to stand at the grave where Jesus had been laid to rest. And we discover that he is alive and he stands beside us wherever we are and whatever may be happening to us. Today we discover that Jesus stands beside us when we are feeble. When we are feeble. When we are aware of being incapable of coping with what must be done in life, with what we see as the task before us. These women thought, they would never be able to move the stone and nobody else would do it for them. They discovered that they didn't move the stone, couldn't, that they didn't need to move the stone, for God had already done that for them. Now, I think that you and I all know what it means to feel feeble. I certainly do. I certainly do. I know what it means to be feeble physically, certainly. We know that we would like, no, we know what it's like to look at the tasks that must be done, that must be performed in our life, some of the things that we ought to do, and we look at them and we know our weaknesses. We wonder if some of the things we have to face can ever be solved. We look at what is happening in our land and in our world, and we wonder whether we will ever see a resolution to all the problems. What can we do about it? When we feel feeble, there comes to stand alongside us the one who has the power to rise from the grave. When we are weak, there comes to stand alongside us the one who is strong. When it looks as though we will never be able to cope, there stands alongside us the one who enables us to cope. That's so much of what the resurrection of Jesus means for you and me. That all his power, all his strength can come to be in us when we feel fable, feeble to face the tasks of our future. And Jesus stands beside us also when we are fearful. Now often with a sense of weakness, there comes a sense of fear. When we can't do something, we are afraid. It's one of the inevitable emotional reactions in our lives. When you can't cope, we are afraid. We fear what will happen to us if we don't solve our own problems. We fear for what the future will bring. We certainly know what it's like to experience fear in our lives. 
But when we are fearful, like those three women at the graveside, the one who was was in the grave comes to stand alongside us, to take away our fear and to give us hope and courage. He comes as a risen Lord so that we may know that there really is nothing to fear in life or in death. He shows us that he is Lord of life and Lord over death so that we need fear nothing. If the very worst enemy, death, has been dealt with, then what have we to fear? Nothing in all creation, St. Paul reminds us, can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then we learn that Jesus stands beside us when we are forlorn. Lovely wild word, forlorn. I don't think you use it in your regular daily speech, but it's a word full of meaning for us. Those women came to the grave and asked a question in themselves about their immediate future. Who would roll away the stone for them? But I guess... They also had a lot of other questions about a longer future. If our friend Jesus could be killed in this way, what hope is there for us? If the one who looked to us so like a son of God that we could think of him as God himself could be put to death, then is there really any future? for us at all. Everything looks bleak beside the grave. Hope is taken out of life. We are lost and forlorn until, until we realize that standing beside us is the one whom we've been mourning. Until we realize that standing beside us is the one who has taken all our time and its problems by the scruff of the neck, as it were, and who has risen from the dead and who will be our life forevermore. Now we can share in something called eternal life because the one who is not in the grave is the one who is able to give us eternal life. Our future is actually secure. Our time has not run out. We have forever on our side and need not be overtaken by the sadness of feeling that we will never have enough time for our life. We look at the immediate future in our land, in our world, I don't know about you, but we feel pretty forlorn about it. It does not look good. But then we're looking at it from the perspective of the grave and not from the perspective of the one who rises from the grave and lives forever. The risen Christ today comes and stands beside us as we're at his own grave. He sees how feeble we are when it comes to coping with everything we have to face. And he gives us new strength. He sees how fearful we are when we face a future we can't control or, or understand. And he gives us new, hurry, new hope and new courage. He sees how forlorn we are when we feel that time has run out for us. We will never find joy, the joy we desire so much. And what does he do? He gives us joy and peace. So on this glorious Easter morning, let the risen Christ stand alongside you and give you all he wants to give you for his blessing. Let us pray. Risen Lord, you see us in our weakness and our fear. 
You see us in our sadness. And in your great mercy, you stand alongside us. And you take our feebleness away and you take our fear away. You give us a new joy for our sadness. Enable us by your grace and strength to go forth to live each day in the glory of your wonderful presence. For we ask it for your love's sake. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as we declare our faith and the music group will lead us in the sung version of the Apostles' Creed. continue our response to the great news of the living Christ among us in the offering 
which we bring, symbolizing the offering of our lives to him. And you're invited to come and place your gifts in the basket. Lord God, our Father, today is your day of victory over sin and death. It is you who have worked our salvation. Father, we pray that your church throughout the world would declare the truth of the crucifixion and the resurrection of your Son and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. A joyful triumph over sin and death. He has risen. Father, this morning we pray for the country of Latvia, a country of northeastern Europe on the Baltic Sea and a neighbor of Russia, a nation predominantly Christian. Father, we pray that the truth of your gospels is preached from the churches in Latvia and these churches would be a light in that region where the reality of war is close at hand. Father, we pray that as, the, as Latvia received many individuals and families from the embattled country of Ukraine and Russia, may they receive them with a loving heart. Father, we pray for the Christian churches in Latvia, that they would fly the banner of Christ's peace in that region. Through them, Lord, show your love, your grace, and give them hope. Lord our God, we pray also ask you for a blessing upon our own land of South Africa. As we draw closer to the election day, we ask for a temperance of your Holy Spirit on our politicians as they seem intent on sowing dissent and division among us. Father, during this time, we ask for your spirit of understanding and love among the people of this land. Father, you have said your word in your word, that you came to this earth for the sinner, the poor, the widow, and the orphan. You came for the marginalized, the sick, and the downtrodden. Father, we bring to you these people now, and we ask for a future in South Africa given by you, by your will, that these people of our land, whom there are many, may be uplifted and blessed by a government that knows and understands the value of your word. Father, we bring to you our own church as we wait on a new minister. Father, my prayer for St. Andrews is for peace and unity among us, that during this time we may grow strong in your love and the knowledge of your word. We ask for your blessing on every person who has stood before our pulpit here at St. Andrews and especially for Bob through this Passover weekend. We thank you for his preparation and his leading of St. Andrews in seeking your will. Father, we ask that you would give Bob a full measure of your Holy Spirit so that his cup runneth over. Bless Bob and give him your strength. Father, this morning we also pray for Terry Woodstock who had a awful fall off a ladder, we ask 
Lord, that you would bless him with a full recovery from that, Lord. Father, we bring to you our missionaries and evangelists, and we ask for your blessing on them. Father, this morning we pray especially for Austin Zeka in Zumutu. We pray for your sustenance for Austin. We pray for his family and for the community of Zumutu. We also pray for his future home, which weighs heavily on Austin's heart at the moment. Father, we bring to you our tithes this morning, and we ask that you would bless them to your glory. Father, we thank you for the giving hearts of the people of this congregation. Bless them too. We thank you for the very accurate administrators that we have over our tithing. They are your servants. You are truly a God to be feared and glorified. He has risen. Amen. Last Easter, we sang the words of the hymn we're going to sing now for the first time. They were written for our communion service last Easter. And I invite you to join in the singing of the hymn, The Saviour of the World Took Bread. So I invite you now to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, draw near to this holy table, and let the living Lord be known to you again in the breaking of the bread, and let him set your hearts on fire as he comes to live in you. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Please share the peace with one another. Peace be with you. 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 Fellow sharers in the life of Christ, hear again the word of command of our Lord Jesus to observe this holy sacrament as that command is recorded for us by his apostle Paul. The tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself, that the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread. 
And when he'd given thanks to God, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. Um, the word memorial, we are told, actually means for a recalling of the presence, for recalling my presence with you. That's why you do this. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. And said, this cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me, a recording of my presence. For every time you do this, eat the bread and drink the cup. You proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. So that we may joyfully obey his command, let us follow his blessed example in word and action, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread, I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common use to this holy mystery. As he gave thanks, so let us draw near and offer our prayers and our thanksgiving. The responses will be on our screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our great joy to give you thanks, mighty God, heavenly King, for all your blessings, for all your good gifts to us. Most of all, do we praise you that when we had separated ourselves from, us, from you by our sin, you did not leave us to remain in separation forever, but sent your Son in pardoning love to restore us to your family and fellowship. We praise you for him who bore our human body and died our human death, but who has destroyed the power of death by his glorious resurrection and has given us the victory, assuring us of an inheritance in heaven which nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. In humble adoration, we join our voices with all who have praised him and who praise him still in heaven and on earth as we worship and glorify you, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, sanctify this bread and wine, your own gifts, which we set before you, that they may indeed be for us a means of sharing in the risen life of Christ our Lord. And through them may he indeed live in us, and we receive every benefit of what he has done for us. And hear us as we pray as he taught us to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? And the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, This bread is the body of Christ, which is for you. Take and eat as a memorial of him. This 
the new covenant is the blood of Christ. Think of it. On that first resurrection day, two people invited a stranger into their home. And they knew in the breaking of the bread that this was Jesus. And so we rejoice to receive the bread, which is the body of Christ, broken for you. Take and eat as a memorial of him. This cup is a new covenant sealed by the blood of Christ, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of it, all of you.
Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you have made yourself known to us here in the breaking of the bread as you made yourself known to your disciples on the first Easter day. We rejoice that through these material things, your spiritual power has come to live in us, to give us life, and to fit us for your eternal kingdom. Receive our thanks, and give us your joy. We bless you that we are united with all your saints throughout all the ages, and especially remembering those who have been near and dear to us in our own lives, who have known the risen Christ as their life-giving power. And now, Almighty God, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord, Send us out into the world in the power of your Spirit that we may live and work for the good of the world and for the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to say a very special word of thanks to all those who have played a part in making this whole weekend an opportunity of great joy for us all. Uh, those who have prepared all the music, those who have done all the work up and to see that we can get everything on the screen, and for those who have provided the wonderful flowers which have become a part of our services Friday and this morning. On Friday, you were invited to place a red rose on the cross as a sign of the offering up of your sin to Christ. You're invited this morning when we have finished our service, closed the service, to come and take one of the white flowers as the symbol of your being washed clean. Though your sins be as red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And so when we have sung our final blessing in doxology, you're invited to come and take one of the flowers. Thank you to yourself for um, three amazing sermons. We were joking outside yesterday. If you were 30 years younger, you'd make our lives a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but thank you very much. We really appreciate all your, your planning and, and just everything that went into it. And I'll just echo your thanks. Well, just also two things, just uh, as Bob said, also the, the bunches of flowers, there's Please, per family, just be welcome to take a, you know, one of the bunches. And again, thanks to the ladies who put that all together. Um, I didn't notice them. I thought they were still in Cape Town. I just want to say congratulations to Jonathan and Melanie who got engaged over the weekend. Yay. I mean, not the weekend, but the last week. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so, yeah, bless you guys. Then lastly, there from the sunrise service, there were a couple of hot cross buns. So if you get there very quickly, those who get there quickest will get what was left. But there's tea and coffee afterwards. Um, so please hang around for some fellowship. Thank you. Let's stand as we close. I raise a hallelujah.
everything inside of me. Praise the hallelujah. I will wash the darkness free. Praise the hallelujah. Praise a hallelujah, fear you lost your hold on me, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar, up from the ashes, hope will arise, death is defeated, the king Alive. Sing a little louder, 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 sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. How raise a hallelujah! How raise a hallelujah! Anyone is unable to come down and collect one of the flowers, but somebody close to them, please collect one for them and give, give them to them. Go now in peace. Go in the power of the living Christ. Live your life victoriously through him and for him. For he has given you the victory and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Glory will be seen to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now. Sorry, folks, one last thing. There is the retiring offering. Just a reminder, if you've got um, some spare bob, and have, you know, as you know, it goes straight to our missionary. So thank you very much. Step out of the shadows. Step out of the grave. 
to the wild and don't be afraid run into wide open spaces graces waiting for you dance like the weight has been lifted graces waiting 